Every year there are three billion gallons of water that flow through the Jordan River. The Jordan River is only about 70 miles long. It begins at the Sea of Galilee and it goes 70 miles dropping 600 feet until it empties into the Dead Sea. The Sea of Galilee every year receives three billion gallons of water and it takes about three years for that water to circulate in the Sea of Galilee and then it empties itself into the Jordan River. Now the Jordan River dropping 600 feet over 70 miles, you think it would be water moving kind of quickly. But I've been there a couple of times and in most places the Jordan River is about as wide as our church and in many places it's only about as deep as your waist. It's more like a gentle flowing stream of water. You see all of that water going down into the Dead Sea. The Sea of Galilee receives water from the nearby mountains in the north and underground springs. So three billion gallons of water goes into the Sea of Galilee and every drop of water that the Sea of Galilee receives, within three years, it lets go. As a result, the Sea of Galilee is fresh, everything is alive. Even today, as at the time of Jesus, abundance of fish, the farmland around it is rich, You look at the shore and everything is green and alive. So the spiritual lesson comes from the geography lesson. When you take and receive whatever comes your way, and you don't try to hold on to it, but you eventually pass it along, you're alive. Everything in you stays fresh. When you take the gifts you've received and stir it up in your life for a few years and then let it go, you're going to be more alive than when you started. As a contrary, the Dead Sea is the second lowest place on the surface of the earth. The only place lower than the bottom of the Dead Sea is the place at the bottom of the Antarctic Ocean. So the water flows into the Dead Sea, and that's where the River Jordan ends because there's no outlet. So the Dead Sea every year receives three billion gallons of water. And then during the summertime, when it is very hot, Most of that water evaporates, leaving behind salt, saturated. As a result, nothing can live there. The spiritual lesson follows the geography lesson. The Dead Sea receives everything and tries to hold on to it. It never passes it on, and as a result, everything is dead. In your spiritual life, when you try to hoard, things seem to disappear. So the lesson is pretty simple. If you give, you live. If you hoard, you die. So back to the baptism of Jesus. He went to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John. The word Jordan comes from a Hebrew word meaning to go down. And it makes sense because that's all the river does. It goes down 600 feet. Jesus went to a place meaning to go down to begin his public ministry. And I'm struck that we often think of Jesus being high and mighty, sitting at the right hand of God the Father ascending to heaven, watching transcendent God. But I'm struck by how many times the scriptures make note about how Jesus intentionally went down. Think about the incarnation. This is the end of the Christmas season. The last weekend we'll have here the image of the child Jesus. Here you have God who jumped out of heaven, came all the way down into our humanity, a frail small child. God came down from heaven, took on our flesh. In the life of Jesus, the transfiguration, he went up on a mountain. He had this great experience of knowing who he was. He spoke with Moses and Elijah. Everything was wonderful. The disciples said, let's build tents and stay up here. And Jesus said, no, my destiny is to go down. That's my nature. I need to leave this and go down because I came so that I might suffer and die. I came for humility. I came to go down as much as I could. And then you watch Jesus at the end of his life at the Last Supper, sitting with his disciples. They sat down at table. And then after they were sitting down, Jesus went even lower. He went down on his knees and he washed their feet. Then the next day he was arrested. And then he had to carry the cross. And even walking with the cross, carrying all of our sin, he fell down not once but three times of all the sin that he took on. And then after they nailed him to the cross and he died, the scriptures note that they came up and they took him down. 
from the cross. Even in his death, his nature was to go down. And then lastly, what is our article of faith? What happened to Jesus after they put him in the tomb? Did he stay in the tomb? He went down as far as you could go. He went all the way to the gates of hell. He opened them up. He went to the world of dead. He went to the basement of all of humanity's sin, and he raised everything up to life again. There's something about going down. And even when you look at the baptism of the Lord, let's return to that. After Jesus went down into the waters, what happened? The sky opened up and the voice of the Father came down and said, this is my beloved Son. And then the Holy Spirit came down and descended until it rested right over Jesus. At the baptism of Jesus, you have the whole Trinity involved in a movement of humility coming down. So what does that have to do with you and me? I think much. First of all, Jesus reveals to us a God who came to be shoulder to shoulder with our sin. If you would have watched Jesus go into the waters of the Jordan, you would have just thought he's another sinner surrounded by sinners. He had sinners on both sides of him. And by the way, that's also how he died. At his death, he had a sinner on his right and one on his left. So the nature of Jesus coming to us is to come in the middle of our sin, literally. He came to save, not to condemn. And so that means that in your life, when you have sin, brokenness, frailty, the worst thing you've ever done, the one thing that you pray nobody ever finds out that you did, that's the sin that our Lord came to take away. He came to be by your shoulder to reach in and to heal that. So we ought to let him in there. We confess our sin. We begin every Mass by remembering our sin. Not too far from now we start Lent. And during that whole season we... We examine our conscience and prepare to celebrate reconciliation, forgiveness of our sin. Our God came to be shoulder to shoulder with us to help us. And lastly, I think what that has to do with you and with me, Jesus was about 30 years old when he was baptized. He was born, and you have God on earth for 30 years. And what did he do during those 30 years? All we hear is a story about how he went to the temple to be presented, and we really don't know much else. It appears as if God on earth did nothing mentionable for 30 years until he was baptized. At his baptism, he began his mission. And I think the same is true then for you and for me. We are called by our baptism to mission. We are called by our baptism to get involved. For 30 years, God on earth did not get involved. We know that he was with Mary and Joseph in the carpenter shop, but as soon as he was baptized, he was impelled. He went out to the desert, he was tempted, and then he went to work. He began getting involved in human life. Because we're baptized, we're called to do the same. Vatican II says, if you are baptized, you are called to ministry and holiness. For most of you, you say, ministry, that's your job, Father. The ministry that the church talks about is living out your baptism in your family life. So maybe your main ministry is to be a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor. That's my ministry. And you're called to holiness. Well, Father, that's your job. You pray on our behalf. No, because of your baptism, you are called to prayer. You're called to simply be in communion with God to let God say to you also, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. And once you know that identity, you go to work. Some of you might say, I'm kind of shy, I don't want to get involved. You find a way to get involved according to the gift you've been given. And God will take that gift if you receive it, if you stir it up in your life and in the community, and then pass it on someplace else. When you do that, you'll be more alive than you ever know. Can you say amen?